Hello everyone and welcome back to Jenna Voice. So I'm wanting to make two videos, this being the first video, covering all in one topic really, which is singer's health. And I have a lot to say about it, so I want to make two separate videos about it. But today's video is going to mainly focus on the care and keeping the overall health of a singer and how to stay healthy in a world that's full of germs and sick people. So before I start this video, it is really important for me to say that I am not a doctor. I'm not prescribing any of these practices to anybody who watches this video. So if you want to try anything that I talk about, you know, things I do or things I use or ingest, like that is your choice. Um, you know, it, it never ever hurts to check with your doctor, even if it's something over the counter because every single person is different, every body is different, and everyone has different needs. And so, yep, just be wary of that. And um, also, I can't promise that any of these practices will work for you. They work for me or I, I like to do them, so again, it's all at your own risk, and I'm not a doctor. So, without further ado, the overall keeping and health of a singer. So, first and foremost is, of course, diet. If your insides are healthy, I believe that that is what is going to encourage an overall healthy body. So. What we choose to eat on a regular basis is going to affect how we feel, our performance levels, how strong our immune system is. So when it comes to diet, I'm not perfect, but I try to incorporate fruits and vegetables into my diet every single day. Trying to get natural growing foods into my body is important on a regular basis. You know, I really think if the majority of your diet is takeout food or processed food, it's gonna make you sluggish, it's not providing you with the nutrients your body needs, and you're not gonna perform or feel at your best. So trying to get healthy natural food into your body every day is something I highly recommend. And then secondly, staying really hydrated, making sure you're drinking enough water every day, a lot of doctors say that eight glasses a day or whatever. I like to always have a water bottle with me almost everywhere I go and I sip on it constantly or I have tea or occasionally coffee. I know there are some people who like to keep, like to drink coffee throughout the day. That's okay, that's your choice. Just keep in mind that if you're ingesting tons of caffeine, it will dehydrate you, so it's important to replenish that with other fluids that are not caffeinated throughout the day to keep your circulation going well and feeling your best, so make sure you drink enough water. Along with that, like I said, my diet's not perfect, so I take multivitamins every single day. I prefer chewable vitamins over traditional horse pill swallowed vitamins um, only because I just tend to have a sensitive stomach to those but you know choose whatever is right for you um, I just take a multivitamin women's multivitamin and then occasionally I take a fish oil supplement um, or an omega-3 or omega-3 uh, supplement I've heard that it can aid in absorbing other nutrients so I've taken it on and off before, I'm trying it again, um, but if you eat a lot of fish in your diet, you probably don't need an omega-3 omega or fish oil supplement. Thirdly, I also take Airborne religiously, and I know some people will think I'm stupid for doing that, that it doesn't do anything. Well, it has a lot of good vitamins and minerals that can help ward off colds and I think it works pretty well for me having it in my diet. I honestly don't get the cold often. I just had one recently um, but I was traveling a ton and not getting enough sleep 
so I think that was due to other reasons, but it seems to work for the most part having it in, it in my diet, so I keep it there. I like to have it, so that's up to you if you want to try Airborne or a similar product to that that has those marketed cold fighting vitamins and minerals, but that's up to you. The next part to being healthy, I have to say, is exercise. Getting a moderate amount of physical activity in your week, I think, is really healthy for you. I am not the best at working out. I've tried it in many different ways, different stints, different fads that I've tried. I'm not a born runner. I've I've tried training up a little bit with different interval um, jogging types of running exercises. Uh, I've tried yoga, I've tried HIIT training, um, body weight lifting, like just a bunch of different things. Just test the waters, see what you like doing. Find something that's a physical activity that gets your heart rate up just a little bit that you really enjoy doing because if you don't like doing it, let's face it, you're not going to do it. It's something, it has to be something that you like to do and that you're able to incorporate into your week a few, a few times a week, you know, 20 minutes or so to an hour, whatever works in your schedule. Just see what works for you. If you're in school, check out your gym at school. It's probably free for you to use and you should take advantage of that. Or there might be some other classes offered. You know, try them out. You won't know if you like it or not until you try it. Even if it's just going for a walk for an hour a few times a week, that counts, you know? Or looking for ways to exert a little more effort in your day-to-day -day life. So if you have a class that's on the third floor of a building and you usually take the elevator, try taking the stairs. It's good for you, you know? It can't hurt you. So take the stairs, take a longer pathway to different places you need to walk to, you know, if you have the time to incorporate it, try it out, get those steps in, try out different workouts, and it will only benefit you. Um, I have to say, if you're able to do cardio, especially something that's really going to bring your heart rate up or strengthen your lungs, it's really going to benefit you as a singer because you need to have strong lungs as a singer. and the stamina to do a variety of different styles of singing as well as movement on stage while singing. Like, there's so many physical demands when it comes to performing as a singer. So if you're able to do cardio in some fashion, definitely do it. All right, so next aspect to being healthy as a singer is mental health. Mental health is often something that is not talked about in our general health classes um, from a young age. I think schools are making an effort more nowadays to incorporate it into their curriculums. It, it needs to be normalized. You need to know when you're not okay and when your mental health is at risk because if you aren't happy and feeling safe and normal, then it's going to affect your health overall. It's going to eat you out from the inside. I've I've had situations, frankly, where I didn't take care of my mental health, I let it get bottled up, and then I physically got sick from it. That often happens. Things just manifest themselves in ways that finally get your attention. If you're not listening to your mind, it's going to affect you at some point. So take care of yourself. If you need to talk to somebody, and get professional help, there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely do it. Or just talking to a friend and get their advice, or just, you know, if you need to vent, vent. Do what you need to do to make yourself feel healthy and safe mentally on a week-to-week -week basis, on a day-to-day -day basis. If, I know it, in school, it can be so hard to do because that is honestly, the most stressful, one of the most stressful times in your life is when you are in school. So making sure you're taking care of your, your mind and your mental health can be really difficult, but take advantage of the resources at school. If you need to talk to somebody, make sure you do it. I've never seeked professional help, um, but 
I know for me personally, if I don't have time, you know, just to myself alone, when I'm really stressed out, it doesn't help me. I need to have my own personal time, whether that's just like scrolling through social media, watching a show or movie that I love, reading a magazine, a book, listening to music that relaxes me or that I really enjoy that isn't music that I am studying. All of those things really help me stay balanced. Whatever it is for you, if you just need to like go for a walk and clear your head alone or talk to, talk to a friend, talk to your mom, anything, taking care of your mental health is so important. All right, next aspect to health is sleep and rest. Okay, so getting sleep is so important. Like I can't, I cannot emphasize, and I know so many of you who are in school are being like, ha ha ha, you think I have time to sleep. You need to make time because it'll catch you. It will physically make you sick. You won't be performing at your best. Like you need to make the time to sleep, whether that's getting a solid seven to eight hours a night, taking a nap in the afternoon when you have the time, power napping, whatever you need to do, sleep is important. So make sure you aren't partying all week long and staying up till 3 a.m. studying for exams all the time. And I know that can be really, really, really hard to do, but trust me, if you don't wanna get sick, get your sleep, get your Z's, Seriously, it's how our body recovers essentially. So if you're not allowing yourself that time It will catch up to you and you'll just end up missing school or things you or fun things that you want to do because You chose to not take care of yourself. So Take sleep seriously seriously. All right, so the next topic for healthiness is a bit of a controversial topic I'm gonna say it's very optional, depending on your situation. But I have been vaccinated from a very young age. I have had all the vaccines you can have and that are required or recommended by my personal family doctor. Um, and that includes flu shots, the annual flu shot. Um, I do get every single year. And I can honestly say I cannot remember the last time I had the flu. Frankly, I don't think I've had it at all in my adult life. Um, you know, the, the annual stomach bug, puking and having a fever, like I, I haven't had that in at least a decade. So if you've gotten the flu shot before, and haven't really taken it seriously now that you're in school, you're like, ah, oh, it doesn't really matter. Maybe rethink that. Um, you know, the flu shot's not gonna 100% prevent you from getting the flu, but frankly, I don't think it'll hurt if your body's used to getting it. Um, with that, I always make sure to get the quadrivalent um, flu shot. Majority, I think, of flu shots that are given out at different pharmacies and such, or some um, family practices, hospitals, are often trivalent, and there's nothing really wrong with those. Um, there's just, there's different kinds of vaccines, so you, or vaccinations, so you need to check with your doctor. Um, the thing about the, the quadrivalent is that it just prevents from an extra strain of the flu virus that could be going around as opposed to a trivalent. So it prevents four uh, different kinds of flu viruses instead of three. So if you're able to get that, it may cost a little more money depending on your insurance or where you get it. But if you're used to getting the flu shot, definitely ask about that, um, what they provide and what your doctor can do for you. So see what's right for you. But it's worked incredibly well for me getting the quadrivalent flu shot on an annual basis, especially during this time, flu season. So check it out as soon as possible if you can on getting your flu shot if you're used to getting one. All right, my final tip on healthiness and avoiding sickness is just overall cleanliness in your day-to-day -day life. That includes taking a shower when you need to, you know, 
least a few times a week. If you gotten sweaty, probably take one that day. Um, and more importantly, washing your hands. Like, wash your hands. The amount of things we touch a day, the amount of door handles that other people have touched, like, it's, it's actually disgusting to think about, especially when you're in school, you're in contact with so many people. So washing your hands is so important as much as you can. I honestly keep um, one of those little Germex pods with me at all times. I get mine in Bath and Body Works so they smell good. Like I so re recommend keeping Germex with you wherever you go. So if you've touched something that you know has come in contact with a lot of people or is it just really dirty and you don't have access to a sink, rubbing some of that on your hands will give you some peace of mind. It kills germs. Frankly, just the amount of times a day we touch our face and we do it subconsciously, whether it's our mouth or just our forehead or eyes, whatever it is, any contact we have with our face is going to increase our risk significantly of contracting some sort of bacteria that we've touched somewhere throughout the day and our risk of getting sick increases astronomically. So washing your hands, using Germex when you need to is so important. Take it seriously. Um, I'll admit I have a nail biting habit. So for people like me especially, if you bite your nails, <coughs> you need to wash your hands a lot in Germex. So make sure you're trying to stay as clean as possible. And then another thing, if you have a friend or a family member who is sick, stay away from them. And I know that can be hard to do because it comes off as a bit harsh and rude, but just say, look, I'm a singer and I cannot risk getting sick. And if I'm around sick people, I'll probably get sick. So don't take it personally, but I just can't be around you right now. So if for some reason you like need to be around that person, maybe see if you can get one of those um, medical masks to wear. Yes, it looks silly. But if you really need to see them and you really don't want to get sick, that's a good way to prevent that is wearing a simple medical mask. And you can get those for, treat for really cheap um, at your pharmacy or online. Um, I haven't really used those before, but I'm looking into getting a good one. Um, I live in Salt Lake right now and there's occasionally really bad smog that collects here in the valley and I've I know one or two friends who um, wear kind of purifying masks simple purifying masks that help clean the air that they breathe in when it's really bad over here so I'm looking into getting one of those but take that into consideration um, depending on where you live if the air is just really bad quality to breathe in for whatever reason look into getting different masks and purifiers if you need if you need that because we all want to breathe in clean air. I mean, if only, if only our politicians would do something about global warming. If only. But the world ain't a perfect place, so we got to do everything that we can to protect ourselves as individuals and promote healthiness and cleanliness. And so I hope these tips will be helpful for you. I'm sure some of them you've heard before. They're not really that groundbreaking, but I think a soft reminder, putting them all into a video, especially during cold and flu season, can be helpful. Um, like I said, check with some of these um, practices to your doctor if they interest you uh, or your parents, you know, they might have some good ideas for you. Just ask around. Also, your voice teacher might have some ideas as well on healthiness for singers. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if you try something different every year that helps you stay healthy that I did not mention. Um, yeah, and as always, please subscribe if you have not already, and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.